Uh, I'm very <laughs> curious what you don't like about yourself. What I don't like about myself. Like he's uh, not gonna think of something. No, I can think of anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. What like your teeth, but you got those. No, fixed. no, that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I've already t- addressed some of these TMZ things, exclusive. <laughs> Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. What day is it? It's Jaitlin Day. (laughs) Jaitlin Day! (laughs) It is. We have a very exciting love fest, and obviously Jaitlin requires no introduction, so we're just going to bring him right on. Mm -hmm. Caitlin and Jason, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I love it, Jaitlin. I'm I'm trying to get Jason to get a tattoo of that somewhere. You are? Oh, (laughs) Never that. That's no, news to me, Jason, guys. Jason doesn't news. have any tattoos, and I'm just trying to like think of one he could get. Jaitlin came to mind. That is a bold first step into the tattoo pool. Yeah, that's not yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 as, as your attorney, I advise you not to do that. <laughs> Make your own decisions. Jason, you're in good company. Neither of us have tattoos either. No. So, Caitlin, you're the weird one here. Mm. I am the weird one. Happily the weird one. You uh, okay, you guys. Today is all about you and your relationship. Our love fests are just about celebrating love and getting really specific about your relationship, going beyond lovely Instagram photos, might I add. You guys document your relationship in wonderful taste. But today we're going to go quite deep and figure out how you two work. And maybe there'll be some lessons for some listeners at the end of this. Jason's full of life lessons and especially in relationships. So you're in for a treat I would say today. You're you're the life lesson person. Maybe I'm the life lesson. You're the like <laughs> relationship lesson. Okay, guess- no fighting. No fighting on love. <laughs> <laughs> We're already getting open here. Fighting about I can- better at what? Yeah, you <laughs> It's a good start. Um, all right. So we're gonna start off really basic. You certainly have been asked this before, but Not only do we want to know what your first impressions were of each other, but possibly how those have changed, if at all. First impressions are always a fun thing for us to talk about because they're wildly different (laughs) from when we like wildly different personally when we met and to today. So when I met Jason, my impression of him was like fully uh, removed from romantic feelings. I was coming out of a relationship. I was going that guy is going to, they should make him the bachelor. He would be an incredible bachelor. He's so well-spoken. He's like the, the bachelor that I feel like we all need in this franchise. And not if, if he isn't like, he's going to be such a good boyfriend for somebody thinking about who I could set him up with in my brain, like always thought very highly of him, but never in a romantic way. Um, just cause I didn't know I was already in that headspace to move on. And then Jason, I'll let you explain your first impression. Yeah, so my first impression was I met Caitlin and I was uh, I was just coming off work, so I was like in a suit and tie, and I remember I was like a little nervous. So there was a little bar, and I was like, "Why am I nervous? Like, what am I doing?" And I had a couple shots before, and then went in and um, and like I saw Caitlin, she was there crying, gave her a big hug, felt like really good energy. It was like even though I was know crying, why? you felt good energy. <laughs> yeah, because she was crying, but I I just came from the security event that. Um, Oh my God, I'm blank. Oh, the actress of Lee, who has Down syndrome, I'm blanking on her I, name. Yeah. It, it'll That's come. Nice. And she just told the story about her whole life. Like her dream was to be an actress. And uh, everyone told her her whole life, she'll never be an actress. And then she she overcame that challenge, became an actress. And not only that, became an actress in one of the biggest shows uh, during that mm-hmm. time. And it was just like this moving story. I was like, you know what, girl? We are going to cry together. Yeah. I brought a bottle of wine. Let's have a good time. And... Um, yeah, that was just like. But what you know. was your first impression of me? Like I was a sad little <laughs> baby that needed a hug. No, I thought you were hot, like a hot <laughs> little smoke show. <laughs> oh, you said the word. We say smoke show yeah, now we, just to challenge the bachelorette because it's deeply someone, offensive, Jason. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no woman wants to be called. A smoke show. <laughs> I would love to be called a smoke show. I so loved it. When he calls me that, I'm like, thanks. You called me a smoke like, <laughs> No, but I thought you looked beautiful. You were in this, like, um, you were in, uh, bl- you were wearing a black hoodie and black pants, and you had your hair in a braids. The braids. Yeah, and I just remember, I'm like, she looks beautiful. Let's have, you know what? Let's have a fun podcast. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Wait, so have either of those first, no, I'm going to backtrack a bit. Caitlin, I don't know if I totally buy it. You saw Jason, no side of you was like, hmm, 
like a little bit of I curiosity. Felt, I it. felt like I could throw out some flirty vibes, but that's just single Caitlin. Like I, when I'm single, I like to throw out like a flirt game. If I think highly of somebody, I'm just a flirtatious person. And I thought he was extremely attractive and I liked like on TV, I saw him and I had all those thoughts of like, oh, he should be the bachelor. When I met him in person, I'm like, he's even better than what I thought he was going to be. Um, but probably in the back of my mind, I was thinking something. Yeah. But convincing myself. I was so Ka- Caitlin is just desensitized to being surrounded by good looking men. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think you were, yeah. you were flirting a little. I bit. was flirting you a little. You were flirting, bit. and I was flirting right back. Because he was really good at like, I like to hold banter with somebody, and sometimes you find people on podcasts that like can't hold that, and he was, and he reminded me of a Canadian like guy from back home. I felt very comfortable around him. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Where, that's nice. Where fast forward to now, my impression of him is I'm like wildly attracted to him, and all of those feelings of like, let's put him in the bro zone completely changed after like a few weeks because we were we were chatting back and forth from podcasting and he knew I was going through a hard time and I don't even know if the outside world knew I was going through a hard time but Jason was um, going on dates and he was sending me like pictures of girls and I would either say like what no. Okay, I like, I'll picture it on the phone. I was in the friend zone. Yeah. That's how I, anybody wants to know how to get, a, get out of the friend zone. You just you know, you get the opinion of that person you're attracted to and see what they think about your date. And that's how <laughs> oh, you know, wow. Right? I feel like that's really risky because you could have no. given Caitlin the impression that you were definitely not interested. Oh, come in on. That. Reverse. Come no, on. no women don't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. <how> <laughs> Wow, I'm being shut down by both men. I'm, I'm actually pissed off. I never thought of that. That's a great idea. <laughs> it was like an all in or all out. It's like it, put all the chips in. I agree with happens. you, Charlene. It's a little risky because it really shifted my brain into being like, oh, wait, why is this affecting me in this way? Maybe I do have feelings for him. And that's what like kind of changed my mind where I was like, but I don't want you going to date with her. And then that's when I was like, okay, I like you. Yeah. That's cute. Yes. When, you, <laughs> when you said you now, I mean, you obviously find him wildly attractive. You're together. Did you find that he became more attractive to you? That's never mind. That's a cliche question. Of course he became more attractive to you. But yeah. sometimes physical appearance can actually like change. Uh, I always found this fascinating on The Bachelor, uh, watching Bachelor and Bachelorette. I was on the, uh, when I was on The Bachelor and we got into like, the final six. I remember being like, when do they bring on the makeup artist and, and do everyone's hair? And they're like, we don't do that. You do it till the end. And I was like, what? and I found it so fascinating that watching the show, you actually just become more attracted to the people you like. And physically you're like more attracted to them because you like their personality. And as I went on watching the show, I always thought girls got hair and makeup done, but it's actually because I fell in love with their personalities that I found them more beautiful. It's so yeah, true. It's very true. Also yeah. smells. Thank you for rescuing my question, Kayla. Smells too. Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 It is amazing. Someone who you don't like, they can just start to. And someone who you liked, but then don't like that smell can become very bad. Yes. (laughs) It's very bad. Drive nostalgia. Like you can smell nostalgia and it can bring you back to like. Jason didn't didn't like my smell when he met me. Or maybe you didn't, not that you didn't like it, but you were like, you need a more like badass, mature smell. I was like using freaking. Charlene will know this because it's Canadian, but Shoppers Drug Mart, which is like the <laughs> like equal oh, I know CVS, Shoppers. CVS like body spray Calgon. And yeah, I was like using right. a marshmallow body spray since I was like 12. He's like, I think we need to take a more mature smell. And I was like, I agree. <laughs> marshmallow. I love yeah, it. It's it like, like plastic spray on. I'm like, I remember yeah. this from a long time ago. <laughs> uh, so, Jason, have your first impressions changed at all? Uh, yes, definitely. I yeah. think so. Yeah, for sure. But your first impression of me was pretty bang on from how I feel like you still feel about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. But I think my first impressions change. Like, I I think when you see Caitlin, I think most... Oh, Pino wants to Pino's say hi. Uh, oh, the famous dog. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you're always hello. He, you know, he's a, he wants all the attention. Yeah, he does. He'll Aww. get it. Ah, he deserves it. Look at that face. But I think when you see Caitlin on Instagram, and that, I mean... Yeah, I don't know, at least for the most part, you just think of like this like hard, funny girl, like this like Amy Schumer type sense of humor, nonstop, but you don't see 
the it, you don't see like the really softer side of Caitlyn, and that's majority of Caitlyn. Like I think yeah, she has a, a heart of gold, and she's very sweet. And uh, there's a huge soft emotional side of Caitlyn that I think more and more, probably every day, you share more and more yes. about that. I, at least in my little time of like knowing you or following you, I never saw. I was so, always like an undercover softie. Yeah. So I always saw Kate, like, in the, like I, I hate to even say this, but I'm like, she's one of the boys. She's chirping. She's having fun. She's like, uh, she's drinking. This girl's wild. She's awesome. But like, that actually is not, in my opinion, like the true, like, competence. I can have like, fun in that set. The foundation of you, yeah. I would say. And yeah. so that's how my, my well, uh, I like that answer. opinion. Shared. That's a great answer. Yeah. That's and I have to concur as a, female friend Caitlin is shockingly like soft actually I agree with you Jason yeah. like when you meet her in, and in, I really mean this in a good way just because you do give off this extremely like assertive confident vibe which you are those things but I mean Caitlin we've only met a handful of times but every single time I'm just sort of struck by just the realness the down to earth that mm-hmm. you don't need to be the center of attention you don't need to make it about you at all and you're extremely humble, just all the things, but just like a good Canadian girl. I was, I was just, I was just about to say the Canadian always comes out. It really does. Yeah, oh, I love that. Thank you for saying that. That's very sweet. No, it's true. I mean, and, I, and, I married Canada. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, so you get it. You yeah. get. It. I married into the family. And Caitlin, in your honor, I wore my sorry ring. I don't know if you can oh. see this. What's that? It literally says sorry. Oh, Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's so Canadian. Oh, I love okay. that. S-S-A-W-R-Y. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you always have a comment on our accents. We should, Why, do, uh, we should do an accent off. Jason can do a better Canadian <laughs> accent than I can. <laughs> I mean, Buffalo... He's probably got it down. Okay, let's yeah, hear let's, it. Let's hear what, some. Can you? Now, you know, sorry about that. We go grab a couple of beers, play a little puck tonight, watch the Toronto Maple Leafs. You know, <laughs> have a little hattie out there, but the boys will come through, and you know, you just don't well, worry. That's you know? that's so good. It's not even. It's just. It's it's, it's exactly right. It's even right. like the pacing of it. <laughs> yeah, there's the nothing. Little. There's nothing wrong about that. <laughs> no, yeah, it's you've got like the proper what is it inflection and like is that the word. Inflection? Uh, yeah, inflection. 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 I want to. I want to hear your about. About. Perfect. It depends if we're talking Western. It's a little Canadian. exaggerated. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a exaggerated. little exaggerated. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's like James Bond level Canadian. It's like, uh, where are we accent. going with notes today? Or, oh, no, yeah, that's uh, like. Where? Oh, where, so oh, uh, here it is. It's like, so so where are you from? Uh, I'm from New York. Yeah, yeah. Where whereabouts? Okay. Oh, that was good. That was, that was good. <laughs> Solid. That was good. I'll I'm give actually that. like shocked at how yeah. good that was. Okay, we're gonna move on. I can't. I feel like we're already seeing it. But how would you two say you compliment each other? Oh man, I'm probably the most. Um, hmm. How do I say this? Like, I think Jason has encouraged my softer side to come out even more. Like. I think I think Jason allows me to be even more myself than I already am, which is crazy because I I claim to be the, like I'm authentic and I like to be unapologetic and um, all these things. But Jason makes me feel more comfortable in doing that rather than I could be like um, stepping on someone's toes or maybe emasculating someone or like, you know what I mean? I feel like you just make me feel so comfortable in, in who I am. As a person, if I'm emotional, if I'm feeling like a badass that day, if I'm in tears, like you're always like, you don't care what you're getting from me. Mm -hmm. I'm very inconsistent, um, (laughs) but he (laughs) makes me feel very comfortable in that because that's truly who I am. Yeah, I think it's fair. I think uh, how we compliment each other is that she always has uh, a better answer. It's going to be no, so No, I just good. think we're completely, I think we're completely. <laughs> it's yeah. like, let me handle this. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I usually just say, you say it. You say it really well, yeah. No, I just think we're, honestly, we're completely opposite, right? Yeah. So I think Caitlin is very emotional. Um, she's very unfiltered. She's very, um, uh, she her, her talents as far as like business are completely, she's very creative where, uh, and she's very shoot by the hip. And so like all of those describing characteristics of Caitlin are the polar opposite of me. I, I, I'm more composed than emotional. I'm more well thought out than filtered, which is also a disadvantage. It's not, it sounds like, oh, that's a good thing, but there's also good and bad that comes with that. 
I'm much more of a planner and analytical. I don't have the creative side of Caitlin. So if you look at like uh, kind of how we act uh, emotionally from a personal perspective and kind of how we address conflict and kind of the, just the scenarios that I think make us us are actually completely different. But the beauty of that, I think, is that we've learned to understand each other so that where I lack in expressing emotion, Caitlin can help bring that out of me and that helps me communicate better. And then maybe there are times that Caitlin, you, you need to think before you just say, and then yeah. we think through that. I always so, say I react with full emotion. Jason reacts with complete logic. Yeah. And I think it could like that situation could create a lot of toxicity or it could be very productive. And I think that we've worked to try and make that uh, productive, the opposite. Not so, every day. Some days we don't yeah, get it right, but true. we try. <laughs> Holy shit, that, that was a good mean, answer. It's, everything's not perfect all the time? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's that why I just say, because I can think it and everything he says, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I was thinking the same thing, but Jason is so articulate in the way he speaks. He nails it perfectly about everything that I feel, <laughs> which also is good. We compliment each other in that way. I'm like, also I'm thinking and I'll just blab it out and you're going to be like, what she means is. <laughs> I like it. It's, that was such a beautiful answer. It was. And yeah. so well spoken. Jason, there wasn't a like, an um, or a... <laughs> well, I, we, you know, I was watching, I was what we were watching some of your, your videos, your speaking videos, mm -hmm. and you, you such jotted a good down. Speaker. Yeah, I was comparing you to the guy whose name I can't remember. It was the, guy, the <laughs> gigantic Frankenstein sized, like, uh, you know, inspirational speaker. Oh, Tony Robbins? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, that's it was like a I less a, uh, yeah when i first met jason tony i was robbins. like you need to be a tony robbins that's he's so funny. good the yeah. <laughs> i don't know how to describe it. he's just a massive a like, monster. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> i mean she got it i did <laughs> yeah it's like frankenstein oh, okay. no, tony robbins <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you an ad an important message an important message yeah and also an ad for something that we love I've been, I honestly, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but since we've been, since we've received our Hello Toshi and we've been promoting it, so to speak, I find that every day, at least two or three times a day, I think about it. <laughs> Not just when I'm using it, but post or pre, I'm just thinking about post it. Post or pre what? <laughs> um, Use. Flowering. <laughs> flowering. A floral bouquet. We are, of course, talking about the Hello Toshi bidet, mm -hmm. which is a bidet that you affix to your existing toilet with no special plumbing quite easily quite easily yep yeah. and then you turn your toilet into a fancy japanese toilet one that sprays you i, I again I, I i've said this before but i'd like to emphasize what else of your body do you clean without water the answer is no. No, I mean, I can't. There's nothing. There's, there's no, no answer to that. Well, especially nothing. You know what's funny is you clean with water so many other body parts that are so less gross. Well, my second question was, <laughs> which you now have ruined my thunder. My second question is, what part of your body is dirtier than the part that you clean with a Hello Tushy? Honestly, the more we talk about bidets on this podcast, the more I just cannot believe it. This Why is, is this not a normal thing? Every toilet should have this. It should be a thing. It should come with your toilet. I like like a flusher, it should have a bit. I hate to say this. I think it's a, it's like basically a toilet paper manufacturer conspiracy. It's like a it's like a cartel. They're like, we can never let them find out about this bidet. <laughs> Charmin. Yeah. The Charmin <laughs> devils. Yeah. <laughs> if you would like the Hello Tushy bidet in your life, in your bathroom. Preferably in your bathroom. I think that's where it should go. <laughs> you can get one for yourself at hellotushy.com slash shandy for 10% off plus free shipping. And this is an exclusive offer for the shandies. Yes. Our listeners. Yes. So go to hellotushy.com slash shandy for 10% off. That is hellotushy.com slash shandy. Okay, so getting back to the ways in which you complement each other, would you say that you were looking for those traits specifically? Yeah. I'm trying to think of like, I've had three serious relationships before Jason and all of them were kind of similar where I was in a position to uh, like who I was as a person was not ready to accept the kind of love that Jason gives. 
And all of my last three relationships kind of remind me of, it was like repeating a pattern that I was like, wait, th- clearly that's not working for me. Um, I need to like work on myself to be at a level where I can accept the kind of love where it's going to work. And I did, I've done so much work on myself in the last like five years that I felt like I kept outgrowing certain relationships and then got to a point where Jason came along and I've never, okay, this is so cheesy and like, oh, but like, I tell you this all the time. I've just never felt so safe with someone that my like wild insecurities that I've had in other relationships, they don't come out. It's if I have an insecurity, I can like feel safe enough to talk to Jason about it. And what was your original question? Because I feel like I'm going off the rails here. Oh, no, I'm enjoying it immensely. Well, I was just wondering if you were looking specifically for those traits. Yes. So then when it came time, like I wasn't looking for a relationship, but I had a complete vision board of what I wanted out of a relationship um, because I was, you know, 33, 32, 33. And I was like, I need to know exactly what I want, what I'm looking for. Um, And I wrote down all these like healthy qualities that I'd want in a guy. And I felt like I was being extremely outrageous and picky, but I was like, well, if I get like 60% of this list, that'll be a huge win. But really when I go back, I need to find that book. I have it somewhere where I wrote out this list and Jason literally checks like everything I would look for in a person. There's like a couple things, like I didn't want to date someone from the bachelor world or I didn't, you know, that kind of thing. Didn't want to date someone who like wanted to um, build something on Instagram, like stupid picky things like that. But everything else that like really mattered in life or what I wanted out of a relationship, I had written down and it was like, Jason just got like thrown in front of my face. And it was like the, the universe was like slapping me being like, he's it. <laughs> and I realized that you were everything that I was looking for out of a partner in life. Huh. What a lovely that answer. That's very lovely. Yes. That, that actually, it brings up a question. Did either of you have reservations about getting into a relationship with a, a, a significant I want to caveat that a significant bachelor nation individual, both sides, <laughs> both sides. <laughs> I really, d- I don't know why. I think I was a bit jaded coming out of the bachelor world just because uh, Charlene, as you know, they like really, there's some like manipulation that happens. There's, you, I don't know. I just felt like a little bit jaded by the whole franchise for a hot minute. Ask me now. And I'm like, I could name all these amazing things that come out of it and beautiful things that happen. And so many, like my life has changed for the best in, in ways for, that have happened from the show. I feel like I grew in like personally the most from talking to producers every day and getting my feelings out, whatever. But I just had this weird jaded feeling coming out of a relationship that didn't work from the show and being like, I'm not going to, you know, dive back into the bachelor pool and keep dating guys in that franchise. I had this whole image about these, these guys just want like, you know, the attention and blah, blah, blah. I was all bitter, but which to be fair, a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And that's why that's the vision I had. I was like, "Eh, not for me, which I don't think Jason, like when I met him, you know, he was still working at um, his bank. He went back to it. He was just living his, his life and, and using, his education and knowledge and everything to try and like do something on Instagram that would help other people, which I thought was really cool. Um, so that was probably my reservation and that was probably my only one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, it was, I didn't, I didn't know, like, you know, the, the show aired March to May before this whole thing. I, it was I didn't do any social media at all and then got off it and everyone's like, you gotta figure it out. Like, you got to do something. So went back to work and then I was being casted to be the next bachelor. And it was, I probably met Caitlin like two, three weeks after that, maybe, no, maybe a month after that, when they, made, they made the Colton. decision labor day. So September. So pretty much for that whole period, you got to get really like date or anything. And so I didn't, I didn't, just didn't know like the whole, what the whole bachelor like relationship was. So you say, you ask if I had any apprehension, I just didn't know any better. If you ask me now, like if you said, like, would you want it? Like, suppose Caitlin and I broke up. Like, like oh, oh, look at that's a sign. It should have never happened. You know, just his head. <laughs> the it's dogs so are funny. But like, you ask me right now, <laughs> after knowing what I know, would I want to be in a bat? Like, like it would. You it, understand it would where take my a reservations are. I, I totally get your reservations, but I didn't know any better. I was just like, yeah, I guess okay. I'm not the bachelor, and I'm single, and this is a girl who just had great banner. She was just great. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. 
Uh, to circle back slightly, Jason, were you specifically looking for for Caitlin's traits, or was it sort of like you knew it when you saw it, or was it something that maybe you didn't write it down like a list the way Caitlin did, but was it something no. you knew would work with you? And that you I think saw? it's funny because I think the the first impression I had anyway. You asked like, what's your first impression? The first impression of what I thought of about Caitlin was exactly what I'm looking for, like uh, independently. Uh, you know, people say like you've tried to associate. You know, people say like instinctively or subconsciously, it's likely that you date someone that's similar to your mother. And so I mm. always dated independently strong women who are, you know, just uh, opinionated and just like so uh, confident with who they were and expressing everything that, that they believe in and achieving their dreams and goals. Like those are always people that I've dated. And so Caitlin is exactly that. Um, I think one of the things that like, I've never dated someone who then looking past that, I've never dated someone who speaks as openly and unfiltered. And, you know, if she's feeling a certain way, opens up, like that's something I haven't, uh, uh, an individual characteristic that has not been, uh, in other relationships, which has led to probably looking back at them, like serious communication issues in those relationships. So it's funny. It kind of does correlate to your first question about the first impression versus actuality. And then, the whole 180, I guess, or it's, 360. Yeah, it's just so funny because I am like your mom. <laughs> like, you, but but you, but your mom is very like reserved in a group setting. Where in a group setting, I'm like still saying whatever the heck I want to say. But your family's more like reserved. Yeah, and I'm more like my family's more like out there. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's a lot of truth to that. You're a lot like my dad. Oh yeah. Yeah. I Jason's feel a lot like of sympathetic with your dad. Yeah. Would it's you say I'm weird. like your mom? Mm, no, <laughs> but you're very grounded like my mom. Caitlin, did you say Jason's like your dad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You remind me a lot of my dad, <laughs> except the drinking. My dad doesn't drink and Jason drinks like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> What great answers. God, you guys are so satisfying to ask these questions to. There's no vagueness no, at all. No, a lot of detail. It's so specific. Mm, and I like straight that. Straight to the point. Okay, I want to know what is different about your current partnership from previous partnerships. What do you have that works this time? I say this all the time. Jason is like the most level-headed, um, confident person, secure in himself. I don't... I have had that in one other relationship, but it, not up to this extreme. Like Jason is just very, he's so confident in himself and what he is capable of and established in his own career and what he knows and like what career path he wants to be on. And like, just, I think he had a really, really great upbringing where he, he's just secure in who he is as a human being and what he wants in a relationship, what he wants out of a career, what he wants in life. And that helps him be extremely encouraging in things that I do. Uh, he's able to be proud of like the money I bring in or the opportunities that I get or things that I have in my life from, from being myself. Like you don't feel in any way emasculated. You don't feel like uh, competitive with me, even though he's a three on the Enneagram, which can be very competitive. <laughs> He's a healthy three. He's a healthy three. Uh, so it's it's nice because I don't really feel like I've had that. I feel like in past relationships, I've kind of always, um, in one in particular, like I followed his dream and he, he played hockey and I would just bounce around the cities to wherever, very Canadian of me, um, to wherever he needed to be and completely lost myself. And it was never like encouraged for me to just find my own passion. It was like, well, you have to be here and you have to go here and you have to do this. And um, same with an, uh, any other relationship I can think of. I just don't feel like I had that encouragement from somebody else to, and, and, and pr like, he's so smart. He helps me so much on the business side of everything. Like I've never had somebody be so invested in what I'm doing and be there to help and drop anything that they have going on to like really make sure what I've got going on is going to be successful. Um, I think that's, for, that's yeah. I, what I haven't had in other relationships. Oh, that is such, oh my God, you guys, your answers. Yeah, they're ah! that <laughs> I, No, seriously. And have you done this before? Yeah, have I you know, done a I, podcast I, I, before? <laughs> a couple. Yeah, a couple. First time. <laughs> I love how you touched on that, Caitlin, because I feel like that's something that not enough people talk about which is 
there's a difference between a partner that allows you to do what you're doing and, you know, and they can be passively supportive and someone who really celebrates it and encourages yes. it. He celebrates it big time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it really helps to have partners that are on level playing field. It's, it's kind of tough when one person like wants to be doing something well and is failing and the other yeah. person is succeeding greatly at what they do and it creates a competitive kind of well and even the goal ch- is for that competitive thing to not happen even if they're not on the even same it level. right, right. Like it just it helps to for both people to be we discussed this with with margie it yeah. helps for both people to be solid in what they're trying to do in their life yeah totally, totally. i also think like competitive is a, a thing that people drive too much with their ego and they compare themselves to others and the problem is like i, I have Oh, that's probably why I'm a three on Enneagram. I am ultra competitive, but yeah. I'm not competitive against Caitlin. I'm not competitive against you guys or other bachelor people because they're not me. They have no, there's nothing that could ever, like you, everyone has individual upbringings and parenting and they've experienced certain hardships and they've had certain successes. How can I be competitive with anybody else but myself? So for me, it's like, how am I finding ways to be better than I was yesterday? Like, what do I know personally within myself that I can be better at? And I think too many people take some of their insecurities and, and position it against other people. And they got this and that, but that has nothing to do with you. And I think that's a great way you know, of saying it's like, I'm not competitive at all. I, I could never be Caitlin. I can, I'm not, I get competitive like with you. Jason. I can't do that. Like, you know, I can't, you know, we, we play a game, we throw monopoly on the line. It's one-on-one. We're playing the same game. Yeah. We'll throw it. But yeah. it's just, we have such different skill sets and what we do. It's just so different. It's foolish to be competitive. Like I, if you win, we all win. Like it's, it's well, stupid. I need to think more like Jason. I That's, can be foolish. It's, I mean, it's, it's really harder impressive. to find than you would think. And oh, someone yeah. might think that they would be that kind of partner. And then faced with a certain relationship, they suddenly totally secretly kind of hope for their partner to fail. It's very yeah. hard to not be somewhat competitive. I'm actually feeling competitive about Jason's ability to not be competitive. I'm feeling competitive <laughs> about that. <laughs> wow, it's so deep. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like meta competitive. <laughs> I'm feeling competitive about their lovely relationship. It Wait, seems what? so perfect. <laughs> no, no, we're good. Everything's good. Yeah, no. right. You guys are like the most inspirational couple out there. I love you guys. Oh, oh come on. Oh, stop Caitlin. It. Caitlin, so nice. We hate each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, they're, they're so cute. We um, just put on a show. We put on a good show. Uh, uh, Jason, what do you have in this relationship that, that's different from past partnerships? I'm so glad you're asking this, by the way. I always try and get this out of him. Like, what, are your, what was your ex's like? I'm always so curious. He's like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> I think that was my answer. <laughs> I think the, like, the, uh, the communication aspect, like one of the biggest, biggest differences. I think, especially when you're younger, you know, we started dating at, oh, I was thinking it was 30. I think in my 20s, you start dating people. Everyone everyone is so worried, unfortunately, about what other people think that they like kind of put up a front and you never actually get the real side of someone. And I think I always had some challenges with that. Like, I think I knew someone, but like, then I would find out X, Y, and Z. And I think the best part about Caitlin, and again, I would say it's a, I mean, candidly, it's a blessing and a curse. It's something you got to work through is you just always know where you stand, <laughs> right? Sometimes like Caitlin, hey, like those are conversations you have with your girlfriend. You don't talk to me about that. Right? Like, <laughs> really, seriously, like, stop talk, like that's not like compartmentalized. Yeah. But the same token, uh, the benefit of that is you, you, you know where you stand, you know where you're at, you know what you have to work on, you know what you have to do to be better. So, you know, I think that's one of the things that I've never had is this open of a communication. I think, I don't know if that's an age thing or it's more of a Caitlin thing. I think it's a uh, age thing is uh, if you are the kind of person to always want to grow and work on yourself, it will be an age thing and you'll learn more as you, as you mm-hmm. grow. But I think it's, it, it depends on the person too, but I think we both, you know, coming off the bachelor and bachelorette and all those things, I think that can kind of set you up for vulnerability in relationships where you're like, un, you're not afraid to, to talk about exactly what you want in a partner marriage. You're like ready to go down that hole of what you want out of a relationship, like, and get there where if you don't go on the show, you kind of play those games. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we were both in a position to just really know what we want, talk about it, set the boundaries right off the bat and say, if you have any insecurities, don't play games. Tell me, let's work on it. Like we were just, we really set set the boundaries from the get-go. Mm. It's so true. Going on the show does sort of like flex and develop a muscle for talking about what you want in a relationship and in a partnership. And yeah, to, totally. yeah like you, you, when you do it so many times every single day, 
you just sort of yeah. you become kind of okay with it and maybe in yeah. like real world it's not normal i think it's really important just touching on this that one at least one person in a successful relationship is brutally honest about the relationship like oftentimes the guy is sort of more reserved and like kind of just holds holds things back a little bit in unhealthy ways sometimes yeah. but i do think that if as long as one person is brutally honest always about the relationship you you have a good shot if neither person is it usually does not end well it's a disaster no, that's a good point yeah I Who, think, who's the brutally honest one in your relationship i honestly think you might be you think yeah i think you're more <laughs> i keep things in a little more i kind of like express them in in like getting grumpy oh you're and right and then you just know you're like why are you grumpy you're like oh i'm not happy about this thing caitlin <laughs> you're so sweet you're so sweet to ask she's such a podcast host that is a good question <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you're not allowed to turn those questions on us from now on it's the last time <laughs> <laughs> I do think there's truth in what you're saying, though. I'm more likely to be like, we haven't connected in a while. Like, I want to connect oh, you're, tonight. You're the one. Yeah. I'm giving or... it to you. I was never taking that rain. <laughs> yeah, it's you. You're the I claim. I claim it. <laughs> okay. We're going to get to some. <laughs> These are our favorite topics, really. <laughs> what was an early hurdle in your relationship? What does that mean exactly? Like an early hurdle, like our first, like one of the first things we had to really. Um, yeah. What was something you had to overcome? Uh, something that was yeah. difficult. It was, you know, maybe a learning experience. Something that was difficult early on that you had to overcome. Was it that my openness no, in your job? No, I think for me it's probably like uh, it's. I've never had a girlfriend. Like you, do you date girlfriends? I have plenty of ex girlfriends. My girlfriends would have plenty of ex boyfriends. That's life. It's over. It's done. Oh uh, yeah. But to live in a world where it's like constantly, it's never, no one stops talking about it. No, like, <laughs> who's Jason? Oh, he was, he's, he was on Becca season. Who's Caitlin? Oh, she was engaged or she was, she yeah. dated this guy, this guy. It's so weird to me, even to this day, that six years later, people are still constantly asking and talking about exes. And so for me, it's like a weird, like, I've never dealt with that. You know, yeah, it's like my exes are just a part. Like they're great people. There's no issues, but like it's just uh, those chapters are done. It's over. Yeah, like why are we still talking? Yeah, about it's just this like, kind of I, 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 and like, but first, also understanding at the same time, like, like the other day I went on a podcast, and of course she's talking about each stage of my life before I went on the show during the Bachelor. We talked about Chris Souls, then we talked about being on the Bachelorette, getting engaged, and to where I am today. And what do headlines take is how I talked about Sean in that moment. And then it's like, why is that still a thing? Like we're, e even if we talked about it, that's fine to talk about it. Jason is very understanding about that as part of my life, but to still talk about it and make those the headlines for after like talking about wanting to like marry him and babies. And they pulled that as the headline and we're like, still, this is still happening. It makes perfect sense. I mean, it's business, yeah. right? That's what's interesting. That's great. Clicks, clicks, right? Yeah. The clickbait. It's driven by advertising. It's all monetization yeah. type stuff. So it makes sense, but it's just like, it never ends. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's, um, we, our last episode actually was on jealousy. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if that aspect of your relationship brings up s uh, some jealousy in either of you. I'm no, I, I, for, I mean, I'll say for me, it's, I mean, we've had, think about it, like we've had, uh, did, like Chris, okay. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve, literally we're at a, t it's me, Nick Vial and Caitlin playing games all night and yeah. Caitlin and Nick were sitting, I wasn't even sitting next to you. Like, I could care. I, I just don't It's care. true. There's, you don't uh, have. I'm all like thinking about Jared. You had, Jared was an ex, Ben was an ex, good friends with that. I'm like. And, and you're good friends with Becca. I'm good friends with Becca. But I'm, I'm not going to lie. Right. There's like a, a teeny tiny tinge <laughs> that can come up. Like when I see you and Becca talking, I'm like, what? does he still have this little thing in the back of his mind? Because he was in love with her. Or at least you said you were like, you had these strong, strong feelings for somebody that you loved. And now to be friends with everybody, like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, it doesn't cross my mind. It's totally fine. It's fine. And we can all get along. And I love Becca. She's one of my favorite people from the whole franchise. I adore her. But that does sit in the back of my mind when you're talking. I'm like, do you still have feelings for a little bit? I'm like, friends with so many of my exes, though. It's just like, whatever. It's done. It's it's, it's great. It's, it's a good happens. sign. It's it a, good a good sign, sign when sign. a guy is friends with his exes. It's and, also and a woman. women. I'm yes. just <laughs> saying he's the guy saying it. So I'm giving yeah, him. Yeah. But yes, both sides. Yeah. but I And I also think it's a good sign when... You, even you, though you have that little voice, Caitlin, 
that overall you know it's ridiculous Mm -hmm. yeah oh i'm and that's i'm the most self-aware too that i've ever been and i think that's something different in this relationship where i might have like said something stupid in the past and been like well what like do you still do that? You were doing this. Like, I would never do that to Jason. Now where I'm like, like, I'll almost laugh about it and be like, you were in love with her. Do you like still maybe have a little something? Like, I'll, I'll like joke about it almost. <laughs> While she's holding like a butcher knife. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He definitely sees through my crazy. <laughs> so when you say an early hurdle, Jason, do you mean then it was, was it just sort of tricky to talk about between the two of you? Or was it just sort of just a frustrating thing to encounter together? I don't think it was either of those. I think it was just eye opening. I think it was just like, oh wait, it's no a one... little frustrating. No, I really think to me it was just eye. It was eye opening in the fact that I we just started dating, and I thought people like I don't know, we would do podcasts stuff like this, and I thought people were more interested in like, oh, like, how, like how this happened, but the focus was all on both of our exes, and so I was just like. Mm-hmm wait, why did we just get out of that podcast or that interview or that discussion? And they didn't ask us one thing about like our first date or what our plans are. It was like literally only about our exes. And for me, that was, it was just, we, we've had this, that's also very like something to be grateful for. We've had very small hurdles to overcome. And we have talked about in like the future. We don't know what is to come. Like we both want to have kids. We don't know what kind of hurdle that will be. If, if we are blessed enough to have kids or if, we do and we parent differently like we we're both just like kind of it's still what just two years into a relationship where I don't feel like we've had really big hurdles yet to overcome so the earliest ones are like pretty small yeah yeah lucky, lucky I know guys. that's a good early hurdle and a unique one because I feel like you know most people probably don't have the public eye factor so it's sort of probably a nice peek behind the curtain absolutely yeah so there's yeah that's not a, I don't even give you hurdle status on that no so yeah <laughs> that's pretty lucky Okay, so mm-hmm. now I'm starting to wonder if you'll have an answer to this next. No, of course I'll have an answer. It's no, impossible. They always have an answer. Okay, let, they always have an answer. No. This is Andy's favorite question. I'll let him ask. Oh, it. how do you guys fight? All out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're I, left hook, Jason uppercut. Does not raise his voice. No. You have maybe once. I don't. I like Caitlin is very. When I say all out, like Caitlin is like she she puts it out there. There's no wondering where Caitlin stands. I raise my voice, and so yeah, I think we like not all the time, but yeah. like if I'm really heated in an argument, I will. I can't like reel it in. You raise your voice a lot, oh. like that. No, that's something we talk about. Like okay, don't. I'm not, I'm just staying. Even Keeler, don't but I don't apologize for that because I, when I'm passionate about something, if I'm excited, if I'm mad, if it's at the TV, if it's at Jason, I've raised my voice. That's just something that I do. Yeah. Um, oh, so it's not specifically directed at him necessarily. It's just a thing you do. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying no, to make it better for him. you, Caitlin. I, I so- find it annoying how Jason argues because he's so level-headed that I'm like, come on, meet me where I'm at. Yeah, I'm not, I don't do that. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to read my voice. I'm, I hate, I hate drama. I like, do too, uh, but it's not that I like drama. It's just that I'm a, I sometimes am overly emotional and passionate about something that I get too heated in, in the moment. I'm a very in the moment person. And like we've said, this whole podcast, you're going to know how I feel. So that's how I argue. Um, and I've gotten a lot better. You wouldn't know that because you haven't dated me for the last however many years, but I've gotten so much better of because of therapy. I love therapy and I've learned to now like walk away sometimes. Maybe sometimes you don't even like when I walk away. I'll do that sometimes. Like I'll just no, shut it. That. Oh, it's great. Okay, good. Sometimes I just <laughs> shut it down and walk away. <laughs> you should do that a lot more often. <laughs> yeah. Earlier and more often. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're very, but you are a little bit defensive. Probably. Okay. I thought he was going to get defensive there. You yeah. defensive. He also gets defensive. I asked the question and now I'm seeing it actually happen. Well, you know yeah. what's funny? Well, yeah, exactly. I'm just, like, yeah, thank you. Minute, this is perfect. Here's how I view conflict. Like conflict should be addressed and let's find a solution and not let it happen again and be done with it. I don't want to yell. I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to act foolish. I'm not going to slam doors. I'm not doing that. I'm, th- I'm not wasting my energy on that. If you like, if there is, if you're going to, attack me or accuse me for something let's sit down and talk like if there's something going on let's talk i'm not so, drop the so follow up along those lines do you often jason find yourself resolving the conflict by either apologizing well 
by apologizing when you're not really sure that you're in the wrong, but you just want it to end. And I, no, I don't want to. No. Okay, you never do that. <laughs> I'm too stubborn. I'm too stubborn. It's too so stubborn. I'll, okay. I'll just be like, I, I fundamentally disagree with that. And if you want to sit down <laughs> and like maybe break that down, then we could break it down. But like, okay, we we're in a gridlock. Can't we'll, <laughs> yes. and, and then Caitlin, how do you respond when he's like, I'm not, I'm not giving in, but I'm not going to fight with you, but you still think you're right. How, do, how does it dissipate? Well, a lot of times I can, like I said, just a few minutes ago, I'm very self-aware. And so you can probably admit that if I'm wrong or if I'm acting like outrageous, I'll be like, I, I get very, um, I get, I suffer really badly from hormonal depression and anxiety. And those are usually the times where I'm outrageous or like where I'm just, I, I can't reel it in. It's like something is just off in me where I can't not cry. And I'm, but it's only like, well, only it probably adds up, but it's like, I relate, relate to this. You do. Yeah. And you know that it's not even you. Yeah. You're like, yeah. this is a facet of me that comes out once in a while. Yeah. And I recognize objectively that I'm being completely unreasonable. Yes. But I can't do anything about it. Yes. The, the big part though, to me is the recognition, like that you, you do sit back and you're like, cause I won't, even though in those times happen, even though like deep down inside, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I still try to sympathize with what's going on and then I'll let it go and then see how you react. And every single time you're like, okay, I thought about that and here's where I was wrong. Like you yeah. are self, so self-aware in those yeah. situations. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. That's great. You know, what's funny. It's like sometimes couples will answer this question and <laughs> their fighting style will just not match what I envisioned. Like, you know, someone who's really calm, it turns out is like a real yeah. screamer or whatever. And you're just like, whoa, your guys' answer is exactly what I would have expected. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I, you can guess like for that, I, I would feel the same way just from listening to us this whole podcast. You'd be like, Jason's probably logical. Caitlin's probably emotional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He seems so even keel. Yeah. yeah. Corporate, yeah. corporate banker. Typical. Corporate banker. Yeah. <laughs> See that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Would you say there's something you two do to actively work on or to maintain the health of your relationship? Is there a reset button or something you do? Yeah, I think it's cooking together. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like our, mm. I think like our, our it's date planning nights. date nights, which I think yeah. is probably most couples go to for resetting. Yeah. But it's we love to like put on music. We love Frank Sinatra and put on Frank Sinatra and cook together and put our phones down and like actually have conversation and then play a Monopoly deal after. I feel like whenever we do that, we, well, it depends who wins. If I win, then it's a good night, but. I think <laughs> we're really good about our night. Like my business partner can't stand it. They're like, oh, night just happens and you shut up, you're gone. You like, don't just, though. But literally though, all my partners are like, where do you go? But I'm pretty, they all know, like morning I'll be up five in the morning, hit me up, let's go. And usually to like six, seven, I'm locked in. And I'll answer here and there after, but they know after that, like, don't reach out to me. And so oh, I do think we do a pretty good job of at nights, blocking it off, like trying to find ways to cook dinner, have drinks, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree with that. It's so necessary. If, if, if possible, it must be done. But we, by the way, we could be yeah. better. Like I could be better. Like I'll still get a text here and there or something. I'm very good at shutting it off. Yeah, and you are. I'm like business wait. done. Let's, yeah, it's Caitlin. Yeah. I'm the same as you. Like I, it's ruthless. I shut it off. It's like you're not going to hear from me for a whole. Day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way. It's yeah. it's important to me. It's really important That's to me. And, good. and yeah, you and know, even on that, like we'll be in that time zone of it's shut down, and I'll be like, so how did that go? She'll be like, I'm not talking business. Yeah, I'm like, I'm done. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> if doors closed, you can't even have a conversation about it. No, no, I'm done. That's that's the way to do it. it yes. I try. I try. That's Sometimes I'll shut it off. I'll start go airplane mode. And then at like 11 before bed, I'll turn my phone yeah, on. Yeah, you do like, that. And it'll I'm be like, like Raiders of the Like the, the arc opening in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let me <laughs> ask you this. Do you sleep? Do you have good sleeps? I have good sleeps, but I'm like almost a narcoleptic. Like I could sleep oh, okay. in the middle of like a parade. I'm not, okay. that's not I'm the same way. way. I'm the same way. Okay. Oh, I'm yeah. jealous. Caitlin, I do not have good sleeps. And that's one of the reasons I don't touch my phone is because it's only, I know it's only going to just spark. It stimulates something. the brain. It stimulates your brain. You're going on overload. You do that all the time. Jason has terrible sleeps. And I'm like, that's because you're on your phone worried about business stuff for the next day. Shut it off. But yeah, I mean, it, it's easier said than done. Okay, now what I think is one of the hardest questions we ask, to the point where I actually took it off the list for a while, 
but I'm putting it back on for the two of you because I think you can handle it. I like <laughs> no it. No pressure. What's something about your partner that he or she might not like about themselves, but that you like or love? Oh, that's, that's, that's Ooh, a fair question. I'm- I think I think one thing that you don't you beat yourself up on constantly is like your looks. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm aging or I'm this or my hair or this. And like you constantly. And I, I, I'm i like, what are you talking about? You, and I'll say to her, I'll be like, you honestly look beautiful. And I'm not just saying it's sad, but like, you look beautiful. And then she'll have this face like shock. Like, like what like, are you? Like, are you drunk? Like, you liar. <laughs> oh, you lying you son of a bitch. This and think <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, because he think, says it at the perfect times when, when I don't feel beautiful. So. But I do think like the underlying theme with that is like, you like, in a lot of things, you're very... Uh, you're very like humble and down to earth for you know what you have and what you've achieved and um yeah okay. well i just the same thing with you like when you feeling down about your looks i like, oh, you're so beautiful and you're like oh you're sweet i, I that thanks like as if i'm lying it's just the yeah, weirdest thing I, <laughs> and i think that's a function uh, to some degree of the bachelor like being on tv and being in the spotlight as like a woman who's supposed to be beautiful yeah. and, and who being, is never supposed to change might yeah I you're supposed to look exactly like yeah. you did on your season till you're 100 that that's the one that really stands out to me is especially caitlin since we're from originally you know, for if we go back all the way back to Chris's season, which yeah. is still hilarious to me that you were in Crystal's season. <laughs> I know. Wow. It's just hilarious to imagine you guys in a romantic situation. It is hilarious. It wasn't romantic. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, yeah. it was like another one that was like bro Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, one of the things that strikes me most is how you're sort of expected, and I don't even just mean about aging, but just any choice you make, whether it's your style, how you wear your makeup, how what color you wear your hair, how short you cut your hair. Oh. No one wants you to change how you look from when it's they first saw you. The one comment I get from most people is, Oh, you look so different. It's like, well, yeah, of course I do. I've changed so many things. It's about been, my- it's been but, like but, six years, yeah, seven years. Yeah. But insane. also it's even, it's on steroids, which it's all, it's like 95% women. And women are so much worse about this than men. If it was all men yeah. watching, they'd be like, oh, you're hot. It's great. Yeah. Keep, keep, give it up. Whatever you're doing, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, but like women stuff. are just like, oh, your hair is different, oh, your face different. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, well, some women are no, caveat. Some women. Are, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to slander all women. I mean, I. But it is true. They're harsh. They are, out and there. The, I mean, I get it. So I can only imagine Caitlin the extent to which it is. So like, I feel you on that one. Yeah. Some of the comments that women make about Bachelor Nation women's looks is, uh, is like nothing a man would ever say, no matter how much of a jerk he was. So. It's like deeply evil like just wow why like why That's are you saying so true. that and it's so funny because to this day people are like oh you get your lips done and i'm like i have since the day you've watched me on tv like <laughs> nothing changed about that where have you been <laughs> yeah where have you been i literally have been doing it for years <laughs> uh, exhausting Anyway, yeah, yeah. I applaud you for dealing with it. it and I applaud, I, she's always been so candid and the whole no. industry just drives me insane. But yeah. we're going to move on to lighter topics. No, not yet. Caitlin, Damn I'm going to answer the question. Damn it. What is something? Uh, I'm very curious what you don't like about yourself. What I don't like about myself. Like he's uh, not going to think of something. No, I can think of anything. Oh, okay. Things. Yeah. What, like your it. teeth, but you got those No, fixed. no, that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I've already t- addressed some issues. TMZ <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I've talked about Jason had no teeth. They're <laughs> all <laughs> fake. <laughs> yeah, zero teeth. Uh, I talk about the fact that I, I, to hide my emotion, I don't talk about my emotions a lot. Uh, I'm deathly afraid of like needles. anything like needles. I talk about some of my. Is that something you don't like about yourself, though? Yeah, it is. Like I okay, literally, okay. I go to a doctor's office and I literally okay, I walk in I'm, and I pass out. Like that's I'm not go something with I this like about myself. <laughs> I'm gonna go with this one. I love when Jason's emotional, and you don't like when you're emotional, but you're not afraid of it, but you don't like it. Yeah, I hate when I'm embarrassed. That's another thing. Yeah, okay, th- there it is. There it is. That's what I. I love when people show humility or like self-deprecating or if you can just like handle like um like if I'm throwing punches like it, there's certain things that he gets very embarrassed about that I wouldn't think would embarrass somebody and you get re- and very defensive too and I'm like what's well, that a big deal 
thrilled that you did this. And he's like, I didn't do it. And I'm like, we did though. <laughs> where I think it's cute, the things that he did, where he finds it really embarrassing and you don't like to be embarrassed. That's mm-hmm. that's a good one. Okay, that's what it is. That's yeah. a good answer. Yeah, that's You a got good one. there. Okay, final question. Any beliefs about relationships that have changed now that you've found each other? Ooh, that's a good one for you. Because you're very, tra- you were very traditional thinking. What do you mean? Like your beliefs where you get engaged, you get married, you have kids. Oh, they're still my beliefs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. You would be upset if we got pregnant first before. I would, yeah, I would, I've, I've openly said this. I would much prefer that we would I know engaged, you'd prefer married, it. and then have kids. I know you'd prefer it, but would you get upset? No, I mean, no, I wouldn't get upset. But you said those are my traditional okay. values. I prefer that we were engaged, married. Do you have something to tell Jason, Caitlin? I'm, yeah, I was just saying. I don't want to, I want to break it here. Not <laughs> drinking what, you, what I usually drink right now. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what beliefs have changed for me? Um, maybe that our kids should go to school. I was going to say, I think <laughs> our, higher education. That, yeah, you know, I, I went through the whole the go to school, go to work, get your MBA thing. And I think Caitlin clearly has not followed that, um, that like model and it's worked out so well for her. And the more I continue to see the way like our, our countries and student debt and the ROI and some schooling is, is, is actually negative. Uh, I think differently about education. That's probably one. My um, beliefs in like human beings have changed because I was so naive before. I thought everybody was like, here to be friends. I thought the producers on the show were family. I thought like anyone that wants to do business with me really has my best interest. <laughs> You've come in and like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like so true. Wow, it's good. Yeah, completely Canadian yeah. too. I yeah, know, it's so Canadian. Jason has really opened my eyes to my um, my belief in the human race. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of sharks biting at this one. Uh, right? We'll throw them off the. Get them out of there. Yeah. Help you out. <laughs> Jason, I've got to commend you with um, with Restart because you really, I say this because it sort of touched on what you were talking about and like the student debt and just sort of the state of the country. It really does feel like you're trying to make a difference when the path of least resistance could easily be to just sort of do the bachelor thing forever, oh, yeah. you know? So this yeah. is sort of unrelated to what yeah, we we're, were talking about. Impressed. We were both extremely oh, I, impressed. I, I yeah. Appreciate, I appreciate it's, that. it's really impressive. Yeah, like, the, yeah. The whole thing is just like, I've seen being in corporate America for 10 years. I look back on it and I was just like a, a, a puppet. I was just like, tell me where to go and I'll go. And I just think about how many people, um, just uh, we're just not taught the things we got to know as far as it's related to career navigation, managing debt, investing. And there are so many, monsters out there that are taking advantage of the, the the overall average consumer base. And the whole idea of restart is to rethink about how you're approaching everything, right? Mm-hmm. The way you're looking at the people you bank with and when you get your mortgage and how you buy your car and your boss and your raises and I just self-promoting you yourself. And they don't, they don't teach this stuff. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's been really um, impactful, I think. And I appreciate that feedback. Thank you guys. Like, like I said, it would be far easier to just you know, do Bachelor content, recap The Bachelor, talk The Bachelor 24-7. Yeah, I'm not seeing enough of you shirtless, Jason. I'm <laughs> That's actually part of the reason I was, like, so attracted to him, too. I was like, ooh, not too many shirtless douchey bits. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> they really, I mean, it's something you got to look for. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's, I've seen way too many of the below the navel like you know that what's that part yeah. like the below the <laughs> oblique side like where you should have pants what is that yeah. you should have pants. yeah the part where you should have pants but there's no pants the danger zone. That picture yeah. yeah it's like right it's where you should actually have pubic hair if you didn't like kind of wax it at the top <laughs> It's true. Anyway. They, they come off the show and all of a sudden they're like in with a modeling agency yeah, yeah. and shirtless. Yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. Anyway, so good respect. props. Well done. <laughs> That's a, a I'm glad I don't know what you look like naked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm sure it's good. I just don't. Great. Know. It's great. I'm here to say it. <laughs> okay. So quick true or false. And then we're going to get to the game. Okay. True or false. When you know, you know. False. False. Hmm. Timing is everything. True. True. Opposites attract. True. True. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. True. True. 
Wow, that was <laughs> wow, easy. Was so <laughs> Can you tell we have a vacation apart from each other next week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love missing him. We work together all the time. I'm sure you guys are the same way, and I love missing him, and yeah, I know you feel the same way. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They yeah. answer that like almost like you answer like a COVID test. You know, like, do you have a fever right now? Have you have you felt very ill in the last twenty four hours? Have you been around someone who's been coughing on you with COVID? Like, they just that was like true, false, true, false. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah, before. no, I agree. All zero those, hesitation. Yeah. yeah. The probably the only controversial one is the one about when you know, you know. I, yeah. I genuinely don't know. No, I think I you have to. That. I think you really have to I get to know to, somebody. You have to really get through the yeah. good, bad, and ugly. When you know, you know, it might just be geared towards like um, lust, or it could be just natural intuition. Or that could happen for some. And, but unfortunately, I don't really for truly me, believe you got to like. I don't know. You got to earn it. Like with anybody, I, like as far as anybody I work with, it's like you got to earn your stripes. I gotta. I gotta know that I trust you and I believe in you and I understand yeah. you. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I agree. totally, I agree. totally agree. I also think a lot of people sort of apply hindsight being twenty twenty to that question. Yeah. It's like it's easy to be like, oh, yeah, I knew from the second I sure. saw you that I would marry you. It's easy to say that 10 years in a marriage. Right. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Right. True. So true. So true. But that is the unpopular question. Or sorry, that is the unpopular answer to that question. But I completely agree with mm -hmm. you guys yeah. on that. OK. Let's get to the game. Okay, we're ready. It's now time for the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you guys were so cute writing your answers. Something about your little heads down <laughs> with your hats on. We're like heads down, we meant business. <laughs> and so quiet. It, there was no discussion, no like, oh, no. La, la, la. it was all just silence uh, uh, business you could, tell, you could tell they like games they're games. yes we take yes. games seriously yeah. yeah and there wasn't even like a suggestion of cheating they were they both no. took it no. they were being very, <laughs> no cheating yes. ever yeah Abominable. by the book all right so we're gonna get right into it right. question number one and we'll start with who should we start with we should start with the the the, the lady of honor the lady of caitlin. honor caitlin okay. Okay. caitlin if you could have one superpower what would it be and both say it and show the camera Okay, <laughs> this goes back to my insecurities. I would never age. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a good one. I mean, I I want I wanted to replace my existing superpower with that. Even though, even though I can't wait to be like '90s and not give a crap about anything and just like drink on my porch, I still that would be my superpower. Jason, what did you think Caitlin would answer to that question? I thought she would say, uh, "Be a psychic or." Speak to the dead. Oh, yeah. Shoot. I don't know if you can read it. Because she was <laughs> not all into like psychics and energy and hearing from That's the past. That's true. I wish I could speak to people on the other side. Yeah. Well, well still not a point. Still, still not, not a point. point. I guess. Um, Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Jason. I, I thought Jason was going to get that. Mm -mm. I did. But I think he went with the safer one. Yeah. That's true. It I, it could almost come off as a little insulting if yeah, he had wrote. Yeah, you wish you would never. Also, it's also strategic. That's true. Guys. Yeah, there's yeah. yeah, yeah. Smart, I almost want to give him partial credit, but yeah. it's not. We know what you did we there. Good job. We have strict rules here. <laughs> okay, Jason. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Mine would be predict the future. I don't know if you have the lighting. Ah, there it is. It's that's right there. That's such yeah. a financial. That's so yeah. yeah. I, I, so I, I assume you're 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 going back a week and buying game stock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I should have said other things. I just I, I said he was going to want to read minds. Oh, that's kind I of know. in the same universe. Don't but give me a point. No for that. point. No point. No, no but point. Very good one. answers. Good very answers. good incorrect answers. My second one, a hundred percent, would be like know exactly what someone's thinking. So yeah, that's, that would be 100% be number two. Okay. All right. Question number two. You're on death row. It's your last meal. Caitlin, what do you order to eat? I said sushi, like high end, good quality sushi, or McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I love, I love the highbrow, lowbrow. Yeah. That's excellent. He occupies both universes. <laughs> okay. Jason? I went into she detail say. here, and I think I should. I'm gonna. I'm gonna argue as to why I should get a point. But I said she would have red wine and Spain sparrows, her wine, <laughs> and then after or before that, she would have a gin martini with olives. Oh wow! I said she would order some form of salmon, which would be in the yeah. form of sushi. I literally then wrote mm -hmm. McDonald's fries, mm -hmm. and then I wrote and I wrote dark chocolate for dessert. 
Wow, that's really good. That is exactly what I would want. See? Sorry, buddy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Caitlin, doesn't that make you feel like warm fuzzy inside? Yeah. <laughs> you got that so accurately. <laughs> that, because you know it's also so sweet is if I would come home crying from Dancing with the Stars, he would have like exactly that waiting for me at home. <laughs> and it was like the best feeling in the world. Oh. oh. Love. I like the way the first two things are alcohol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like, no, I didn't <laughs> think about that for yours. I just did a whole, I just did food. Yeah. Just did food. Okay. Before, before the salmon and McDonald's, you want to be lit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. McDonald's while you're lit is even better. Okay, I said Jason would eat on his. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Jason, it's your last meal on earth. What oh, do yeah. you order? So I would get buffalo chicken wings as an appetizer. Then I would have filet mignon, <laughs> medium rare, crab legs with drawn butter. I'd have a little chocolate peanut butter ice cream. And then the whole time I would just be drinking vodka martinis on the rocks with, with cheese stuff. Okay. Oh, so it's wow. basically a vegan, vegan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, great. <laughs> <Going light. laughs> okay, well, I, w- I think I should get a point. I said filet medium rare. Oh, so wow. You got it. You, you got it. That's all you nice. need. You're done. Caesar salad and mashed potatoes. How'd you not put chicken wings? Wow. I wasn't thinking appetizers. <laughs> God, I wasn't thinking it. courses. That's I really was just thinking the main though. meal. Because I did literally put filet medium rare and yeah. you said that. So okay. that's good. Okay. Don't focus on what's missing, Jason. She, she got the she point got as well. Yeah. Very, yeah. very well done. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, very good. good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. Caitlin, when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? A dancer. Oh. Oh, come on. <laughs> I even knew that. No, I don't yeah. even, I'm not even dating her. He certainly got it. Jason, let's see what you put. That's not what you tell me. You tell me all the time you wanted to be a TV or a radio show host. Oh, that's true. I did. But that was that was in my 20s. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a dancer. In my 20s, I wanted to have my own radio show. <sighs> you guys aren't going to make Jason, it. Jason, you are. to say. <laughs> Over. You failed the newlywed game. Dang. I feel like he overthought like dancer was too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was like, it was too clearly the answer that he had to. It was the only time on a love fest where I've known the answer. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. It's not to rub it in. To the point actually where we almost didn't use that question because I was like, well, it's going to be kind of like, what's the point? Like, obviously, we we had this conversation. (laughs) I thought you would have been like that. It's like a vanilla answer. You were on such a roll. You were on such a roll, man. Come on. Let's let's pick it back up next to you. All right. All right, Jason. And what did you want to be when you grew up? I said an NHL player. Okay. <laughs> what is that? What? Hold on a second. Do, do that. Like, put it closer and and hold it steady for a second. Yeah, I just yeah. want to see. Yeah, what's we going got on. it. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Got to be really yeah. close. Okay. And then you get to see my okay. nasty nails. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. what I was focusing on. I'm so mad that you said that because you, d- I went back between WWE wrestler Billy May or. <laughs> Billy May. Or a poker player. A poker player would be my second an- second answer, but that is a hilarious oh, wow. answer. Wow. Wow, that player you told selection. me you always wanted to be a poker player. I, did, when you I was. When I was younger I did, but I also wanted to be an NHL player. Jason, uh-huh. I well oh Caitlin rather. I like the eclectic selection of of career choices for Jason there. Yeah, yeah he had a few dreams growing up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> still chasing them all. <laughs> we all are. Yeah. Uh, okay. Still not. I'm still not a baseball player. I'm still going for it though. It's still going to okay, happen. One day. Never give up. Yeah. Okay, and just so you know, we're at one one. But just so you know, the highest score ever gotten in this game is four. Mm-hmm. Wow. And the lowest ever is a zero. So you're okay. doing okay. So far. Okay. And we've had we've had two couples who've been in the one zero two one, like really low. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to make you feel better, but this is looking good. I'm actually this shocked because we're usually good at these kinds of yeah, games. But I smoked. feel like we we know too much that we're like. Switching up our answers. True. Yeah, you've got yeah, too many right answers. You're, you're right yeah. on the tangent of what That's each true. is saying. You're yeah. just not. We know too much about each other. Too much. You're just too. <laughs> you guys are too good. Yeah. You're too good for this guy. <laughs> Question number four, Caitlin. What is your weirdest habit? I have a lot of weird habits, but I would say my weirdest one is I constantly pick my lips. Oh, can I see a, an example of picking your lips? It's like yeah, picking like, the skin, right? Uh huh. I'll just sit here and like yeah. do this. Forever. I do that too. Yeah. And are you trying to pick skin off, or are you just pinching it? No, I just try and peel off some. Like right now, I'm like into it. I can't stop. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you get so 
so annoyed She'll at me. She'll do it like bleed. Like it's, it's yeah. bad. Wow. It's a bad habit. I just do it with my teeth. Is it? Is, is that, that not better? I just kind of like like get it with my lower teeth. That's more of... normal. I'll just okay. sit there for like, oh, I want to do it right now. <laughs> I'm actually doing it. I was doing it today. Just teeth and tongue. Like the tongue pulls it off and the tooth that's okay. It. Okay, that's a little yeah. We're no. we're good. <laughs> too much, too much information. Okay. okay, Jason, what did you say? Caitlin's weirdest habit. Is? I said I, I put two, kind of like her dinner. I put the two, but the first one was picking her lips. I said nice. Wow. And I also said biting her toenails. Oh, exposed. Biting, <laughs> biting your toenails. I've wow. done it like twice, and once was to bother you. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell people. I tell tell it on my podcast. It's disgusting. I've done it before. That's that's it's amazing. I'm I'm mostly impressed. Like that's a dancer. I want to see that. I've got dirty socks on. I need to shower. (laughs) God, I'm impressed by the flexibility. Nice shower. My feet have to be clean to do it. Is it like a quick bite or is it like a real nibbling for a while? It's a it's a quick bite. Jason, well done. You got the point. That was yeah. got it. There we Good go. Job. That was really, really specific. Yeah. Jason, what is your weirdest habit? I, I said if I'm going to put two, I got to give two. So I said snoring. And then I also said mm. I will actually pick my nails and then I'll pick, I'll like actually, like if I'm sitting there oh, like watching TV, I'll feet. like pick my toenails. Oh, okay. I don't bite them, but I like you pick You do my pick nails. your feet. Not that's, good. but that's not your weirdest one. Snoring isn't weird. It's, pretty normal for people. I wouldn't say but, snoring's a habit. I'd say that's a medical. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're, okay. yeah. You're doing it right now. What I said, licking your teeth. He has like this one tooth that like the ridge of it is like bumpy and he always doing this. Mm. <laughs> and I hate it. Every time I'm like, yeah. stop doing it's that. He's always like, that's gotta get fixed. He'll be like watching TV now. Like this. Yeah, that's true. But I didn't put that, but that's true. Damn. Caitlin, I want to see your card. Like, what did you write? You wrote licking tooth? Licking, licking his, his teeth. teeth. Oh. I didn't know I was going to have to. I usually have good penmanship. I didn't know I was going to have to show you guys right, these. Terrible. So I'm like, chicken scribble, but that's okay. You won. Oh, Caitlin didn't get that point, even though I feel like she deserved it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. As I said, they're okay. both on the tangent. Yeah. They're right there. They're yeah. just not. So yeah. The problem is Jason sabotaged her because he put things that are not really habit yeah you mm. sabotager <laughs> yeah i guess the, the foot picking kind of <laughs> i think i'm gonna come back with this one picking your toenails is kind of like a bad habit. Yeah. the terrible habit uh, it's kind of annoying like, yeah you I always know. try anytime i like touch, if we're talking and i like touch my foot like you're not gonna stop it yeah there's better. a lot of a lot what's of what's picking worse, biting your toenails or picking, picking going toenails? on yeah a lot of picking going on yeah. okay caitlin final question yeah. What is one thing Jason has that you would love to get rid of? His whole closet. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get it. Very good. I totally get it. Jason. <laughs> He's just taking digs, right? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think Caitlin would say? I thought she would say um, to stop filter what I'm thinking. Oh. Uh, Nice try. Oh, I was thinking of like, <laughs> like you want to take away, like, yeah, stop, play, like, stop. Just tell me what you're thinking. Tell, stop thinking about it. Just tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll like think on it overnight and then come up with a PowerPoint presentation the next day as to you why. You say it all the time, too. You're like, okay, fine. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Bring your whole pitch book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jason, you went deep with that. Caitlin went with material objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. like, thoughts. I was struggling. This one I was struggling with. I, like, my head was down way too long. I'm like, I just got to put something. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. You get that. So There's no way. Let's see That's if pretty, Caitlin pulls ahead for the tie. We'll see. I pretty much happens. did the same. I was thinking, like, okay, what would she want? She wants me to, like, the filter. Oh, okay. And so I did the same thing. Like, what would I want Caitlin to have more? Or what did I say? One take thing away. I want to take away. I said the lack of. The lack of filter of exactly what you're thinking. Is what <laughs> okay, she would want to get rid of her lack of filter. I love the I'd double negative the there. Lack, I, I put filter. I put my heating nightcap. Oh, that was that. that <laughs> I was do like hair it. treatments at night, and then I'll like put on the, a like shower cap, and then a heating cap over top, and it's and then I put my Invisalign trays in, and then I like yeah, I'm just. And not, the, she and then does. Jason just jumps your bones right away. Yeah, he's That's like, like oh, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was what you'd say. That's, That's funny. 
<laughs> wow, there was that's so interesting. You guys had such good answers, but yeah. you were like just dancing around each other. Yeah. They should. I mean, this is where the newlywed game falls apart. Like, they really should get a lot of partial credit. <laughs> they but. were too good for the game. But, Caitlin, you lost. <laughs> I did. Like, I feel like if we, if we were allowed to, I know it's ridiculous, but if you could put five answers for everything, we would have got a five yeah. out of five. Just because oh. there's so many. Uh, okay, uh, let's take it easy, Jason. Let's take it easy. Game your damn game. You're like, this yeah. is our game, not <laughs> yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just <laughs> settle, settle down. That's well, okay. Jason, you are the winner of yeah, the Dear Shandy won. Newlyweds game. <laughs> Well done. Yay. Well done, you guys. What will our contestant be going home with? (laughs) A fight later today. (laughs) What am I not leaving with? You guys were such wonderful guests. Such great answers. The best. Thank you. Very thoughtful. Thoughtful and specific. Basically everything we ever want. want. It's all we ask for. It's not that much. (laughs) And you deliver. Thoughtfulness and specificity. And you guys really had that in spades. Yeah. To the point where you almost undid yourselves in that game. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Too thoughtful, too specific. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's hilarious. Thank you guys for having us. I love that you guys are doing this podcast and um, it's it's amazing. You're so sweet. Thank you. Okay, have have a great Saturday. Thank you for spending part of it with us and hope to see you on the other side one day. Of course, absolutely. When we come to New York, we will hit you up for game night. You, you, you better. You better. <laughs> okay, right. okay. Bye. 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 Oh, they were cute. Oh, man. I always marvel at, at Caitlin when I, you know, spend any time with her, you know, when I not, I'm not on Instagram, whatever. You don't see like the public Caitlin. Of course, she does manage to show her real self better than almost anyone I can think of. But she's really just one of the sweetest and down to earth. I was just about, I was going to let you say it, but down to earth is Truly, like right on the earth. She personifies down to earth. Yeah. And do you know how easy it would be for her to have well, changed? That's the thing. I was texting Caitlin before her season, I think even aired, just because we were both Canadian. We're pretty much the same age. And yeah. so we had some things in common. But to watch her go from that point where she wasn't yet Caitlin Bristow, you know, she wasn't yet final three on her season, to being where she is now, like the winner of Dancing with the Stars. She has multiple companies, brands, super successful, has done as much as anyone can do with the platform she's been given. She is the exact same person she was Mm -hmm. all those years ago. I cannot stress that enough. Nor can I stress enough how rare that is. There's yeah. no entitlement, never acting like she's too good for you, yeah. like her time is more valuable than yours. Yep. yep. <sighs> she's great. I really like her. And I and I I have to give the, the Canada thing a little credit. A little credit. Yeah. That's the reason. That's the reason. Yeah. You're not <laughs> let's not give Caitlin any credit. It's where she was born, let's be honest. I mean, that's I, I obviously it's how she's raised and yeah. so many things, but I gotta say we've said before that if certain Canadians were American, they'd be different people. Yeah, we said that about Kevin Went. He's certainly there is a Canadian element there. Sure, yeah, there really is. No, absolutely. I mean, TV exposure at that level is a merciless adversary for your mental health, and she has just rode right through it. Just seems great. And best of all, she has rode through, but she's also shown us as best she can, the difficulties of it too. Like she doesn't pretend oh, right. that it doesn't yeah. affect Honesty, her. Honesty, down to earth, yeah. and just her staying candor. true to herself. It's great. Her candor. Yep. Oh. Such a can about, about the, the dur. dur. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I don't know why I do that now too. You, yeah. you started doing that and now I do that too. Yeah. Such a it's, something yeah, about I have to something. kind of credit Dove with that, to be honest. Really? He, just, he started, he's, he's always said that. Ever since I've known him, he always does this. <laughs> That's funny. What it means. And Jason, we've actually never met him before this. Jason's great. He was great. He's, he's yeah, and it's it's a testament to like how you do the TV and you treat it like it was like a, a trip. And yeah. And then you go back home. Yeah. Um, or you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with just leveraging TV mm-hmm. for for some other career, but but he wanted to do what he wanted to do, and he got back to it, and you know, he's he's as well as Caitlin, very grounded, clearly. I really love how what he's done with it incorporates what he went to school for, what he has expertise in, but it's also leveraging what he's got. Like, it's just the smart way to do it while also trying to help people, build his own thing, create his own 
destiny without just being like, oh, I'll post about The Bachelor and yeah. make lots of money doing that. They gave some of the best answers I think we've ever gotten. Very specific. Like how they talked about how they complement each other. Yeah. And what was different in this relationship with Caitlin's answer about a partner that genuinely celebrates, encourages all of your endeavors and also supports not only when you're happy or, or when you're down. That's another bad thing. When a partner seems to be too happy when you're a little down and wants to lift you up. But then if you're right. doing a little too well, they're not so cool with it anymore. Right. I think that's it for this love fest, Andy. That's a wrap. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you can keep Dear Shandy in business by liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, commenting, following us on Instagram, leaving iTunes reviews, and stars, many stars. Many. And telling your friends, mm -hmm. Andy's favorite. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I think we can wrap. Let's do it. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye. Dear Shandy.